Use a layer mask to make non-destructive edits and create paper stripes without piling on additional layers. This video is being filmed in expert mode of Photoshop Elements, but the instructions are exactly the same for Photoshop, except where noted. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create these paper stripes using a layer mask. I'm beginning here with a new 12 by 12 inch document at 300 pixels per inch with a white background and I've already reset the color chips to the default of black over white. First, let's turn on the rulers. In the menu bar, choose View and place a check mark next to rulers. Next, we need to add a paper. But before we do that, let's talk about why some papers might not work as well as others. When choosing a paper for this technique, you'll want to avoid paper with striped patterns that are parallel to the stripes like this one from Angie Briggs, because you won't really notice the design. Another kind of paper that would not be a good choice is a paper that has a border of sorts, like this paper with the white border and pink center from Little Butterfly Wings. They're both very pretty papers, they're just not ideal for this tutorial. However, using this technique will help to tone down busy papers like these from Dawn by Design, and it's a great way to add interest to more plain papers like these from Little Butterfly Wings. Now that we have an idea about what papers to use, Let's get the Move tool. In the Tool Options, uncheck Auto Select Layer and Show Bounding Box. Photoshop users uncheck Auto Select and Show Transform Controls. Now let's add our paper. If you'd like to follow along exactly, I'm using paper1-ds.jpg from the download folder. Holding down the Shift key, click and drag the paper onto the new document. And then get the Rectangular Marquee tool. In the tool options, click on the new selection icon, set the feather to zero and the aspect to fixed size. Photoshop users set the style to fixed size. Set the width to six inches and the height to 12 inches. On the document, click at the top on the six inch mark to select the right half of the document. In the tool options, click on the add to selection icon, change the width, to 0.125 and leave the height as it is. On the document, click at the top on the three inch mark to make a selection. We will make five more selections at increments of half inches. So on the document, click at the top at the three and a half inch mark, at the four inch mark, at the four and a half inch mark, at the five inch mark, and at the five and a half inch mark. Before moving on to the next step, we need to reset the rectangular marquee tool options back to normal for later use. In the tool options, set the aspect to normal. Photoshop users set the style to normal. Next, we'll add a layer mask. Using a layer mask allows us to make non-destructive edits to a layer. In the layers panel, the paper should be the active layer. Hold down the Alt key, the Option key on a Mac, and click on the Add Layer Mask icon. Using the Alt or Option key will give us the opposite results from a command. So in this case, we hid what was inside the selection instead of hiding what was outside the selection. And then next, we'll add a drop shadow. In the menu bar, choose Layer, Layer Style, Style Settings. In the dialog box, set the lighting angle to 120 degrees. Click directly on the words Drop Shadow to open the settings. Set the size to 8 the distance to 13 and the opacity to 35%, and then click OK to close the settings dialog box. Photoshop users, please refer to the manual. It's important to note that the drop shadow should be kept minimal because our selections are narrow. A large drop shadow would minimize the striped effect. Now that we have the masked stripes complete, let me show you another option. Press Ctrl T, Command T on a Mac to get the transform options. In the tool options, set the angle to 180 degrees. Photoshop users set the rotate to 180 degrees and then click the check mark to commit the change. For more rotation options, please refer to the manual. And lastly, finish the page as you desire and save the document with a unique name. Here's what my finished page looks like. I love the perspective of this image taken at my daughter's wedding. Creating the selection and adding a layer mask made it so easy to achieve the look of the stripes without piling on the layers. 
For a free PDF version of this video, click on the download link and then make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This has been Gina Harper from Digital Scrapper, the very best place on the web to find complete and professional instruction for digital scrapbooking. We help you get your stories told.